Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Susilawati. I'm an excellent poppy enthusiast with decades of business experience. This video is part two of my Power BI Artificial Intelligence series. In part one, I have shown you how we can use key influencer visual to generate insights and create charts and visuals relatively easily in Power BI. If you haven't seen it, please do check it out. You can find the link in the description below. In this video, I will continue to use the same PBIX report that I have shared last week and we'll shift our focus to the second page, which includes a decomposition tree. This is our artificial intelligence sample reports published in Power BI Surface. It has three pages, key influencer, decomposition tree, and anomaly detection. But today, I want to focus on the second page, decomposition tree. Let's take a deep dive together and play around with page two. In this page, we have two bar charts and one decomposition tree visuals. The bar charts let us explore opportunity count by regions, as well as sales opportunity by campaign type. How about the decomposition tree? How do we read this? When you are trying to make sense of a decomposition tree, you need to understand six important facts. Firstly, each layer is showing the sum of previous level. This sums up to that, this sum up to North America, and then this sum up to software, and this sum up to design app. Fact number two, if we select different boxes, then we get the breakdown of this in the subsequent layer. So I can select different ones anywhere and my tree will change accordingly, like that. Fact number three, we can reset the analysis by clicking the roots and clicking it again will open up the default. Fact number four, the AI or artificial intelligence results of the analysis are presented on top of the reports. You can hover to the light bulb and read what Power BI is suggesting as the most important driver of sales opportunity. In this instance, it says sales opportunity is highest when region is North America, followed by sales opportunity is highest within North America when category is software. So what you see on top is dynamic. It can change depending on our selections. For example, if we select phone, Category is more important when the campaign type is phone because the most important driver that makes sales opportunity for phone the highest is when the category is software. And you can see that's changing again and that's also change, okay? Fact number five, the lines can be dotted when it's presenting AI analysis or it can be solid when it's presenting a manual selection from the user. So just know it when it's dotted, it is an outcome of AI output, artificial intelligence output. But the moment you make manual selection like this, for example, that's solid line. Fact number six, user has the ability to reset the analysis from scratch by removing the level. Clicking the cross will remove the level like this. Once you have collapsed your tree, we can then start the analysis from scratch. We can hit the plus button and then we are presented with these options. We have two AI options, high value and low value, as well as some manual options where we can get Power to split sales by industry, dimension, or by sales owner, etc. etc. When we select the artificial intelligence options, which has these two light bulbs, what it means is Power BI is going to find which field within this dimension that has the highest sales opportunity. So let's give it a go. Let's click that. And voila, we have found the answer, North America. Now, if you hover to this light bulb, it spell it out. So it says sales opportunity is highest when region is North America. And you can hit the plus button and find high value within North America. And the answer is software. And you can keep on going. More and more and more. And then it got cut off. So hit the focus mode and you can see 
or we ha has expanded the visualization so that it fills up a whole page so you can drill more and then you can scroll up and down as well if the list got cut off and if you want to you can go back to your main reports and we're back in here we also have options to change the way the data is presented we can sort for example we can sort descending such that the field with the lowest sales is presented on top and the field with the highest sales is at the bottom and if you don't like that you can sort it one more time descending now and we are back to original and as mentioned earlier when you hit the cross button we are removing the dimensions and we are starting again from scratch let's start again and look at low value now this is saying Guatemala territory has the lowest sales and we can say followed by what within Guatemala agronomic seating has the lowest sales and then if you want to you can drill down some more to find the low value and it says that industry is medical specialties so this is an example where you can use AI to find what are the things that make sales low and the answer is when territory is Guatemala and within Guatemala, when we are selling agronomic seed things, that is when sales are quite low and it fits within medical specialties. We are now back at the roots. We have collapsed our tree and now we can start again and let's explore this manual selection. We can get Power BI to provide split of sales by industry or if you don't want to, we can remove that and we can get Power BI to provide split by sales owner, for example. And like I said earlier, we can sort, change it by sort descending, for example. And it's also interactive so that we can select email and we say when it's email, who has the least or the most sales. Let's change the sorting. Similar to before, we can choose anything that we want or we can even combine it with the AI and notice something when we are selecting the AI option we see dotted line whereas when it's our manual selection it's a solid line and the other thing that you should notice as well is the light bulb appear when we have selected an AI options so let me try that again I'm going to select high value and notice I'm going to change into focus mode Notice every time we select the AI value, the line become dotted. So it's telling the Power BI user that really there is an insight in here that Power BI want to share that sales opportunity is highest when category is software within these regions. Whereas when there is no light bulb in here, this is not based on AI. And if you want to remind yourself what's the conclusion, just hover to the light bulb and read. Now back to reports. Now that we have a better understanding of what is revenue decomposition tree and how powerful it is in such that it can give users ability to play around and analyze data by choosing either artificial intelligence feature, high value or low value or manual drill down. Now let's recreate this page in Power BI Desktop. And now, let me show you how we can recreate page 2, Decomposition 3, from scratch. We are in Power BI Desktop and we are going to recreate this page together. The first step would be to analyze this visualization. Open up the visualization pane, click the visuals and look to the right. See that Decomposition 3 is currently grayed out, which means that this is the visuals that are currently being used. And if you click at different visuals, you can see that the horizontal bar chart, stack bar chart is being used. And that one is the same. That's also stack bar chart. And that's how you know how you can recreate a report from scratch. The other thing that you should look at is what are the inputs that is being used in this visualization? For example, in this bar chart, we're using campaign type as well as sales opportunity. And the opportunity is coming from opportunity value and it's just being some. And then the same thing for any visuals, basically you can see what is being used by hovering around in the visualization input 
Now I'm going to click our decomposition tree and you can see the inputs in here are what should we analyze? And in here we're analyzing sales opportunity, which came from opportunity value. And then whatever that we put in here becomes the root of our tree. And then after that, we need inputs for explain by, and we have various dimension over here. And whatever that we put in here will become something that we can select and put on top for Power BI to analyze. Now that we are ready, let's go add a new page by hitting this plus button and let's do this together. Let's recreate our decomposition tree together and fill in these input fields over here with the data that we want to analyze. And we want to analyze opportunity value. So that's down here. Just click that and then rename it as sales opportunity. That's the first one done. And then the explain by are the dimensions that we want Power BI to analyze our sales opportunity. And what we had previously was region. That's done. And then category. And then we have product. And then we have territory. Sales owner. And lastly, we have industry. And we are done. That's our decomposition tree done. Now you may be thinking, oh, why is it looking like that? It's looking a little bit tiny. That's because we need to hit the plus button first. And then if you select high value and more and more and more. Now this is looking similar to what we had before over here. The difference being that's spelled long product category. That's our high value that we have selected earlier. Now, what we can do is we can shorten it by double clicking and just type category. Now it's looking the same, except the color. The color is black in here, whereas it was blue on the other page. So what you can do is you can format the visuals in here and then change the bar color. You can change the color to blue, for example, like that. Now it's looking blue. You can also change the line color if you wish. In here, in the tree, the connector, you can change the default color to blue as well. Or if you really like the color selection over here, what you can do is you can copy Control C and put it into page two, Control V over here, make it tiny. And then what you can do is you can format, paint it into our newly created chart. That way then we are done. Voila. That is my cool trick of copying the format of any charts that you like into your newly created page. Next, let's recreate the stack bar chart with opportunity count by region. So just drag it there. And that's opportunity count, drag it there. So we've got opportunity count by region. That's the first one done. Let's make a second one, control C, control V. We want campaign type. as well as opportunity value and drag that there. And let's rename that sales opportunities and rename that campaign type. Okay, now same as before, if we want the same format, I'm just going to copy control C and then put it over here control V so that we can easily format paint it. And oh, what is wrong with that? Why is that all blank? Let's check out the other page and then check the filter over here. Ah, this is being filtered. Campaign name is not blank. So let's do the same thing into our page. And here we can say in the type, select all except blank. Yep. Now it's the same. 
let's tidy up, delete that, and let's resize this. And we're done. One last thing, you may notice that the sales opportunity in here is 44 million. However, in this page, we only have 29.6 million. Why is that? Now, check the filtering in here and notice something that we have filter on this page where status is one so that is impacting this visual as well whereas in our page that we created earlier there is no filtering on this page yeah so we only have status one or loss not one only so what you can do is you can mirror what's happening over there and add the status and add that into this filter on this page so that we can filter one only and then that way on this page we have 29.6 which is exactly the same as we had before. I hope you have enjoyed learning about the composition trees and will be able to use it in the future in your future reports so that you can leverage Power BI artificial intelligence capabilities to generate clear insight with speed and accuracy. I will post a link where you can download the PBIX file for practice in the description below. In my next videos, I will continue to explore the other pages so that we can continue to explore other Power BI artificial intelligence capabilities such as anomaly detection. Last but not least, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and leave some comments, say hello, share your learning journey, as your feedback and comments are the things that would motivate me to continue creating more tutorials in the future. See you next time!